Stuart, um, I searched for your blog yesterday and I couldn't find it and I'd really like to read it. And I wondered if you could tell me how I can find it. I, it's I, my website. It's a, I think it says blog, you know? I went to your website and I couldn't find a blog, but that's maybe me. Oh, okay. Bob, it's on the website, right? It's on the website. I read it yesterday. Under blog. Okay, I'll revisit. Thank you. There's there's a uh, navigation bar at the top where it yep. says blog, and then uh, down uh, halfway down the page, there's a graphic that says blog post. So you can click on e either place, and it will take you to the blog. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Stuart, hi. Um, I've been reading Rudy's book, Spiritual Cannibalism, and I keep rereading this. I wrote it down so I could ask you to comment about it. He says, tension is prejudice. It reflects self-rejection because of insecurity and prevents oneness. And I, I would just like you to talk about that. I mean, it's very clear what he's talking about. You know, I'm not. I mean, look, most tension comes from insecurity, yeah, it comes from fear. It comes from uh, the inability to make a choice, not having enough self worth to be able to function on a high level in life. Life threatens people, and it threatens people because they truly are insecure inside themselves. A person who has built a system inside, you know, a chakra system inside, and has that kind of, I mean, there's two kinds of security. One of them is ego security. And that kind of thing just you know, usually drives everybody crazy. The other one is a quiet, profound system that's built inside a human being that is completely, you know, rooted inside and capable of dealing with any situation that arises. Calmly, quietly, without allowing the situation to rip their energy out of them. And most tension is, is really part of the, you know, you know, insecurity inside of people. You know, I mean, look, we live in a very big and strange world. And people are confronted by this bigness and strangeness, scares the shit out of them. So there's resistance, there's tension, there's fear, there's insecurity. What life is going to gobble me up? It's going to destroy me. Look, anyway, ultimately, we're all going to be gobbled up and eaten. Yeah. You know, we have no choice in the matter. And I, you know, and part of tension is just that fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. What can happen to me if I take a chance? I'd rather live in this safe world, you know, where everything is familiar and I don't have to take a chance. That's what gobbles people up. It's what destroys people. Somehow having this delusion of what is safety and what is security. I found the only security in the world is connecting with God, you know, nothing else is secure. You know, you never know what's going to happen in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's right. I mean that, and this frightens people because they can't deal with the fact that life is constantly changing. So basically, he's just talking about that, and how can you be spiritually enlightened if you spend your life cringing in fear. Yeah. <coughs> you know, <coughs> you're just scared shitless because of money, you know, or relationships you're involved in, or, you know, you, how can you, how does spiritual enlightenment come if you can't deal with basic things in everyday life? So he's basically talking about that weakness inside people that keep them from truly growing. I mean, I talk about it all the time, that kind of thing. I think that has to be repeated over and over again. 
because frankly, I, I'm, I, I, it goes through into one ear and out the other usually. I talk about it and it goes right past people. And then people go right back into that world of fear, of, you know, insecurity, of, you know, being a victim of life. The only person, the only thing we're victims of is ourselves. Yeah. And people have taken the most horrendous circumstances and turned it into something that became amazing, you know? Anyway, life has to be more than that. It's not more than that. It's just mundane and boring and, you know, and we're hiding out from this glorious world that we live in, the sacred world that we live in, you know, that is constantly there to teach us what we need to learn about ourselves. Does anyone else have a question? I mean, you know, look, what do we all want in life? We want to be happy people. We want to be loved. We want to love other people. You know, and this, it gets so complicated inside people when it comes to doing these things, there's always this thing, do I trust? Yeah. If you trust yourself, you'll trust life. If you don't trust yourself, forget about it. You won't trust anybody. And people just get old that way, you know? I mean, it's... Does anyone else have a question? Okay. Well, if you all like, I can have a little poetry reading. Yes, please. Yeah. please. All right, I will click on this thing here that will allow everybody to see it, I think. I think my glasses are Stuart, Stuart, would you like me to continue recording? Uh, if you want. I'm not sure. It worked on my other computer. Share. I have a new computer that's very advanced and it's beyond me. I have no idea what goes on here. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I can't do it. I don't know what to do. Desktop. Share. Oh, there it is. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, you know, I have a new computer here and I have no idea what goes on here. But anyway, I'll read these things. I think they're interesting. And I hopefully, I don't know if you like them or not, but I got a lot of joy in writing them. The first one is called India. Now this poem in 1995 was used by a student of mine you know, to choreograph a dance that she did at the St. Mark's Church in New York. Uh, when I saw it again, I made some corrections to it and edits to it, and I think it works much better now. Uh, India, on a leisurely walk, I looked at the sky and wondered if shades of blue light and color are without beginning or end. 
About me in the morning dust, cars and carts, water buffalo, dogs, cows, chickens, and cats, and great crowds of people moved on Mumbai streets. Dust and smog rose and covered buildings. And I looked again at the sky, and this time I saw the soul of man passing through a cloud. I saw the soul of man suspended in the sky, and I saw a one-armed beggar child sit on a blanket, and I saw skulls of sheep nailed to trees, and a hundred dead buffalo bloated with gas and rotting on a road. And I looked again at the heavens and saw the soul of man passing through a cloud. And though the sky's presence increased my need to conjure more thoughts, dreams, and visions, I wondered, yes, I wondered if all my dreams were simply the fancy of the soul of man passing through a cloud. The second one is called The Meaning of Silence. When he left the forest for the city after a 10 year retreat in life as a hermit to teach people in the marketplace the meaning of silence, he was consumed by the activity of street life and argued with beggars and students and merchants, lost his bearing and was plagued by the nonstop chatter and the noise of urban dwelling. He quickly discovered his knowledge of silence fell on deaf ears. When he tried to remember the scent of a single flower or the form of a leaf or the cloud-filled or cloudless sky above his head, he could hear only voices of people selling their wares and the rumble of vehicles that moved through city streets, the shouts and cries, the laughter and tears of hundreds of men, women and children. And he realized how ignorant he was and how little he understood the ways of the world. When he left the city once again for the forest and saw above the trees birds fly towards the sun and leaves fall in slow and aimless motions, he thought of how short a journey it is between birth and death and how one note is more than a symphony if it rings clear in the mind of whoever listens and how little he understood the meaning of silence and its place in the world. Third one, and this will be the last, maybe the last one. It's called an old tree. An old tree, gnarled and withered, stands next to a sapling whose trunk and branches eagerly reach for the sun. Have patience, the old tree said. Your time will come. You young ones always want more than you're ready to handle. You think the sky is closer than it really is. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's one wonderful. More. <laughs> one more, and that's it. It's called The Wings of a Swan. She gave herself to a voyager who rode with her through eternity on the wings of a swan. They lay together in a dark alcove above the mountain, beyond the sun, in a world apart from the earthly world of a voyager who rode with her on the wings of a swan. She bore a child for the voyager and they lived together behind the moon beyond the stars where the voyager rode with her to eternity on the wings of a swan. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you. Now I have to figure out how I can get you all back up here again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, yes, yes. Uh, one second, let me see if I can. There you are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stuart. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Really. You're welcome. Anyway, it's just some of the things I've been writing. It's been fun. It's really been fun. And, uh, and, you know, look, I went to uh, all these meetups and writing groups and poetry meetups. And, you know, I finally got <clears throat> outstanding stuff that people write today. It's just terrible, you know? There's no beauty. <laughs> it's all just drab 
you know, things that come out of them. And, and I don't know. I finally gave it up. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I understand. Things on my blog and the hell with it, you know. <laughs> I just couldn't take it. <laughs> You're a beauty. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, there'll be meditation class on Sunday. God bless you all for being here, for you know, putting up with what I have to talk about. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but it's true. You know, you all listen. Hopefully it penetrates, you know, it becomes part of your inner lives and external lives, and something very profound is learned. And, one can use in their life. God bless you. I learn a lot from coming here. And I'm very appreciative of anyone who does show up and is willing to make the effort to build a spiritual life inside themselves. So thank you and bless you. And uh, there'll be meditation on Sunday. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. Thank you, Stuart. Thank, thank you, Stuart. Thank you for the poetry, Stuart. You're welcome. Yeah.